All right, everyone, welcome to episode 10 of the Soulscast, the um, one and only Dark Souls podcast, which that's not true. No, that's not true. It, There's a couple. It just sounds cool. But, yeah, it sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, but for episode 10, uh, we're focusing on the Souls community. We're not going to make this really based on one game or gameplay or something specific about the games. We're just talking about the community in general. This talks about, you know, people... That in typically you find them on the internet that are into souls, how they do it, Twitch, YouTube, uh, other things, and then what we're doing, you know, how we're yeah. contributing to the souls community. Um, but uh, to start, I just want to say that I'm very happy that we've made it 10 episodes. That's like 10 weeks. I think right? that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's uh, I'm sure there's some podcasts that don't last 10 episodes, especially I mean, I don't know how many Souls podcasts there's been that haven't lasted that long, but I don't know, 10 is pretty good. 10 weeks, that's almost, you know, three full months. Yeah, and, yeah. and I, I, there's so many other things I still want to talk about. And then, But I, I think in our minds we have like this order where it's like, we'll get to this subject eventually. We want to yep. cover certain things, and then as things unfold in news, like Dark Souls 3, then we have more content... Etc. So I think it's really yeah. cool that we've gone on this long and we haven't, there's only been like two times where we had to push it the next day, but we still did it. You know, that's no, I, I, I think it's great because we have, I know between you and I, we have, I mean, we probably have enough content for like 50 more episodes. Plus there's always yeah. new stuff coming out, like, um, you know, the Dark Souls 3 stuff. So as, you know, as we go forward, when Dark Souls 3 comes out, we'll play it. You know, we'll, we'll ha- we have content to talk about for a long, long time, which is mm-hmm. great because, you know, I suppose at some point maybe the well could dry up and we would have nothing else to talk about. But I find that that would take such an extraordinary, extraordinarily long amount of time that it, it probably won't happen. Yeah, I know. I mean, and even if that was the case, I think we would just what, move this to every two weeks or something. Maybe yeah, sure. kind of mix it up a little, add some other things. But but anyway, <clears throat> um, so that's that. I think it's really exciting. Ten, ten weeks, and I think that says something about this series, and that's why this episode is on the community. Um, and some of these community members we're going to be talking about apparently um, got to play Dark Souls 3 this past week, or this is Monday, so last week, okay? And yeah, on the awesome. 5th is when the embargo lifts and that people are going to be able to see the gameplay. And they're going to be showing it off at Gamescom. Um, and there are some uh, members of the community that have been flown out to Germany for Gamescom to check out Dark Souls 3. So we're going to be seeing a lot of content in Dark Souls 3, and we will be talking about it next week. I'm pretty sure the next yep. episode is going to be on Dark Souls 3. Everything very, very we exciting. know and we've seen, we're going to dissect it. Um, I can't wait. <clears throat> no, I can't either. Uh, but real quick, if we want to just touch on what we've been playing this week, even if it's not Souls related. Yeah, um, uh, I think I've been playing all the same stuff I've talked about the last couple of weeks. I've been playing, I still been playing Link's Awakening on my 3DS. I'm getting closer every time I play it, obviously. So I'm almost done with that. I nice. have still been playing Dark Souls 2. I've been playing... Um, I we my wife and I played a little Kingdom Hearts this weekend on a, a game that we started together. Uh, I think that's basically it that I've played <clears> really this week. I still have a, a Final Fantasy X file that I haven't touched in maybe a, like two weeks that I, I still plan on you know continuing to play. But right now it's mainly just Dark Souls two and then uh, Link's Awakening on my 3DS. Usually just on my lunch break at work. Yeah. So that's that's it. Wait. So so you play JRPGs? Yes, because I, I yeah I, I, I like um I like most kinds of RPGs besides the real strategy ones. Mm-hmm. But you know I I, I really like the mm-hmm. old style like turn based combat. I like the combat of like a, a Souls game where it's more action oriented or um, yeah. See, and that's the thing. So <clears throat> and pardon me, I have this cough that started last week and I'm getting over it. So hopefully I don't do that too much during the show. But I don't like RPGs, when I think RPG, I think turn-based combat, where it's just yep. like, what item am I going to use, am I going to fight? Now, then yeah. there's strategy games, there's like Shining Force, I love Shining Force, that to me is different, it's like turn-based strategy, but RPGs, and then you get into JRPGs, 
excuse me, but then you get into Dark Souls, and I'm like, well, I don't look at this as an RPG. I look at it as an action game. This is just an awesome action game. Um, but anyway, you know what? One day, I just need to find a JRPG to play and see if it gets me. I've always been enamored by Chrono Trigger. Yeah, uh, you know, I haven't... It in the magazines I, back in the day, you know? I haven't... You know, this is going to sound like heresy since I just said I, I love RPGs. I haven't played Chrono Trigger. Um, growing up, I didn't have it for the Super Nintendo. I didn't know it, it existed when I grew up. Uh, so I never played it. I never... Um, you know, and just to buy the cart, you know, the cart is pretty expensive. Between... Yeah. Uh, I haven't checked prices. Like 60 and 80 bucks, if not even a little more. Probably a little more. So, you know, I had never had a chance to play it. Um... I might have one of the Final Fantasy discs for the PlayStation that came out that has it on there, like Final Fantasy Anthology or something like that. Um, oh. But I just I haven't gotten around to play it. But everyone I know that's played it, everyone online, if you read like best RPGs list, it's usually in like the top one or yeah. two of every single best RPG ever. That and yeah. Final Fantasy VI are basically the like the two big ones. And it's funny because I remember again growing up. I first found out I didn't like RPGs when I played my first real RPG, I guess, because they always never really looked fun, but it was Mystic Quest. <clears throat> Final okay. Fantasy Mystic Quest. Yeah. I got it at Funko Land at the time, played it. I was like, this is dumb and boring. And so, but Chrono <laughs> Trigger and the magazines look great. But anyway, not to veer up too far off topic, what I've been playing is a <clears throat> bunch of Dark Souls. I, I mean, I'm doing a little bit of my Demon Souls run that I'm recording, but I've not been doing as much as Dark Souls because I was just getting back into Dark Souls. I got access to DLC for the first time. So far, it's yeah. amazing. It's more than I could have imagined. It just looks good. Like, as soon as you start the DLC, you fight a boss. Yeah, right at the very beginning. And he slaughtered me at first. And I yeah, was he's, like, he's, he's is... pretty tough. Yeah, and then for some reason, the second time, even though I had to take some hits, like, that's why I always hate it. If I fight a boss, I'm letting myself get hit to kill it. Kind of yeah, makes me yeah. a little mad, but I killed it. <clears throat> and then what I saw after that looked amazing. Great. Great stuff. Um, also, Bloodborne. Um, my brother mentioned something to me, because I keep telling him he has to finish Bloodborne, you know, and he just kind of got tired of it. And I was like, okay, let's just do co-op. And he had a great time uh, us doing co-op. We got invaded, and that just heightened the tension. Um, yeah. It was right before we got to the part in uh, Unseen Village where there's the three hunters you have to fight. Yeah, so it was just huh. a crazy, crazy ride. And <laughs> and then so the next day, you know, he I was supposed to play again with him, and I said I'd have you join. And so me and you, yeah, jumped on and did some. Yeah. So it's really been all souls heavy. I, I I've been playing a little, a few. I, I was actually yeah, this cough I developed last week, not wasn't feeling too great. So instead of playing Souls games, I was actually playing some strategy games. RTS, real-time strategy on PC. Yeah. Um, Attack on Titan. Um, uh, Harvest something? Harvest Encounter? Something like that. Just more light RTS games. I kind of like the strategy stuff. Um, yep. Not like XCOM for some reason, but real-time. I like real-time yeah, strategy. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. anyway. Anyway, man, we could, we got to. I want to get my blue cast back up where we just talk about stuff that doesn't have to be Souls, you know? I know. That would that be fun. So easily. Anyway, well, yep. let's get started. On our episode, <clears throat> so the, for for the start of this, um, basically we have just a list of people in the community I wanted to talk about. Um, well, and you know, there's not too much we might have on certain ones. I just wanted to point out some notable ones. So there's someone named um, Barnesy Jones, okay, and I found out about him through. I think it was P.V. Peverson, which is another one I want to bring up. Uh, and I was actually just watching him earlier today, just playing through Dark Souls on New Game Plus 3 or 5. I forgot what he said. Um, and uh, so Barnesy Jones, he does these awesome PvP battles. So he streams every day, okay? <clears throat> Multiple times a day where he's just doing PvP battles. And lots of technique. He knows a lot. He's commentating. You wouldn't even realize he's actually playing because as he's playing, he's commenting like, oh, uh, that was a punish. Oh, he did that. Oh, that was a dead angle. Like he's calling out everything and it like teaches me or teaches anyone watching like, I mean, it's PvP, but you could apply it to PvE if you wanted to, just how the attacks work, yeah. <clears throat> how certain items work. And it's just crazy 
how much more variety you realize there is in Dark Souls, and it makes me understand when people say Bloodborne doesn't have that much variety. Because then when I'm seeing Dark Souls, I'm like, wow, yeah, depending on what ring you have on, um, what weapon you're using, with armor, with ring, I mean, there's so many different ways. Uh, I was even watching them play where, you know, they do it in the force level. Um, it's like a, PV, a good PvP spot where he was sitting back, he had the, I forget, it's the... Is it the binoculars or monocle? I forget. In Dark Souls, he was he had it zoomed in like he was a cameraman. And <laughs> it was just kind of like this unspoken, you know, these rules of how to yeah. PvP. These people came in. They would battle. He would follow them with the camera, and he would call out everything that was happening. That's awesome. <laughs> I know. It is. That's it's really like, cool. It's like a, that. that is the eSport. Like, that... That could very well be an eSport. It's not because the game is so niche, but I really think that could be. It reminds me of these fighting game tournaments where you have, like, you know, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter. You have the big ones. And then you have Blaze Blue, which is big but more niche. And I think it's great. It actually wasn't at this last Evo because of a update that gamers didn't recognize. But I want to see more of these smaller games that have potential to be eSports. And I think a PvP yeah. battle... And Dark Souls is a great, a great thing to watch. It's, it's no, that would be that would be cool. I've watched. Um, I I know there's like uh, like message boards and websites where they set up like a, I, I call them like a like a Fight Club kind of thing. I don't know if it's exactly yeah. like that, but um, yeah, there'll be like a like a moderator, and then there'll be there'll, there'll be two people, and usually in Dark Souls two, they all fight on the the bridge in the in the Iron Keep. So like there'll be one, one guy. I don't know if he's the host of the world or what. I don't know exactly how they do it. Mm-hmm. But there's the one guy who basically is like the referee of the battle. And then there's two people that come in and they just fight each other. They have like a, a set uh, like a set guideline. Like they have rules and they all follow them and, you know, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And it's just, you know, one fighter against another. And it's pretty neat that they can even set that up. And I would assume probably, you know, 99% of the players follow the rules because it seems uh, Dark Souls community um people playing online are usually usually pretty respectful of other people even when you know you're invading someone or getting invaded people are usually pretty good about these like unspoken rules which sometimes is also annoying and i don't even know if we'll get into all that kind of stuff today but it's nice that the community can be <clears throat> so respectful and follow rules that aren't in the game at all and it's kind of neat and this guy specifically that's barnese jones who i honestly had never heard of until just a couple days ago when you emailed me Mm -hmm. and that might be a bit of a theme going through this episode is how i have no idea about anything ever because i might as well be like a hermit (laughs) Uh, not entirely true but um he he was um he had had like a a four minute compilation youtube video where he just there was a dark souls 2 and he was using uh i think it's a spell that like disguises you as an item uh, yeah. Or, like, a, a piece of something in the area that you're in, so, like, you'll transform into a box or transform into um, a barrel, and he would just wait, and um, when, you know, I, I, he would, I think he was invading, so he would wait, and, you know, the the host of the world would run by, and he would pop out of his box and shoot him with the most powerful dark magic I've ever seen in a Souls game, and he would one-shot everybody, and it was hilarious. Um, yeah. But it was, you no, know, I think I know what you're talking about. I don't remember if, I sh- if that's one I showed you. But I think it was Ouroboros is the, and that's another community member in in Souls and all that. It's a guy named Ouroboros, but it, it, Bard maybe Nisa Jones could have had one too. But maybe yeah, it, it was him. I, I I don't remember. The name of the video was called Animal. That's all I remember. M- okay. Maybe I'll even check my email right now. Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. But no, that's a good point because okay, so this this is PvP in Dark Souls two, and these. And it's funny because near the end of the game, when I was messing with the magic, I learned you could do that. You could uh, hide yourself as another item in the world. Okay. Yeah. So I'm watching this, and I'm like, "Wow, there's like, it's hilarious watching yeah, the guy turn it on and hide." But it's like, there's so much you could learn from souls. Not you know, so you can learn about how to go through the PVE, but then learn about PVP. You know, yeah. just from watching these. And um, yeah, I think Barneasy. Or Boris, and possibly even PV Peverson, and there's a, a couple others that are part of this uh, group um, that is on Twitch. There's like a group on t- 
Twitch you can follow where and and see that's funny I haven't really got much into Twitch until I'm fighting all these Dark Souls guys you know when it comes to mm-hmm. watching Twitch I I, yeah. I play more than I watch but yeah it's these huge group of people that they uh, not huge but um, a group of guys that they're the ones that went out to get to see Dark Souls 3 in San Francisco in a castle and yeah, that's um, awesome. <laughs> yeah that's yeah what's coming up August 5th um, so yeah Barneasy, Ouroboros, um, they are guys to check out. And you know, in the comments or the description for the podcast, we'll have all these guys listed out. And if there's anything we miss, if you guys want to let us know in the comments, we'll uh, link you to yeah, definitely. whoever else. Um, okay, so another one that I want to move on to is someone that you know really well. And, his, okay, his name is Epic Name Bro, okay, ENB. And what's cool about this guy is when I first... First got into Souls back in April after playing Bloodborne and realizing this is the greatest game ever. I obviously go to YouTube. You know, for me, my Bloodborne run wasn't blind. Uh, a lot of it for me to actually get through the game, I did have to look up things. Um, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like totally look up spoilerish. It was I always tried to that fine line. It's where I need to advance, but I don't yep. need to know everything to advance. So yeah, but. His name always popped up, Epic Name Bro. Now, when it comes to the Souls community, I think he's recognized more of the the Demon Souls and Bloodborne guy. Um, I know for the um, Bloodborne strategy guide, he was he was in the credits. Uh, yeah. Future Press for the Bloodborne strategy guide. Uh, I think he probably had his hand on the game. From what I understand, I think he got to play it and go through it and write out everything that he did before the strategy guide came out, and that's really cool. Um, and if so, you guys can find him on YouTube, Epic Name Bro. He does a lot of cool walkthroughs, and he goes over lore. Um, uh, and I think, Shane, you had something on him? Yeah, um, I, I believe he worked on the Dark Souls 2 strategy guide as well. Um, oh, wow. I, I believe he did. And also, um, back to that video I was just talking about for a sec, it was the Ouroboros Ninja. the uh, uh, that, Ouroboros that Ninja. So, yeah, okay. yeah, so you were, you were right on that. Okay, so Epic Name Bro, um, I don't remember where I discovered him. Um, I it, I probably just a random video on YouTube. Yeah. Back in um in 2012, and this is going to be a tiny bit of an anecdote. Yeah. Uh, November 2012, roughly, is when I discovered him, and I remember that because my daughter was born in November of 2012. She huh. was she was six weeks premature, so she stayed in the hospital like I think a full month. She she went wow. home. Uh, couple days after Christmas, I believe, of that year. So I had a, I drove a lot from my apartment. I Every morning, my, my wife and I would leave our apartment. I would drop her off at the hospital, which was about 30 minutes from my apartment. And then from, from the hospital, I would drive to my work, which, again, was another roughly 30 minutes. And then when I left work, I'd go back to the hospital and then go back home. So during the car rides when I didn't have my wife, which was, you know, almost an hour, I would put... I would find one of his YouTube videos on my phone um, and, like, plug in my, like, receiver thing that lets you play, uh, like, an iPod or, like, your phone, like, through your car speakers. And I would sure, have, the YouTube, yeah. I would have the, the YouTube video of his going, and I can listen to it. I wasn't watching it, obviously, because I was driving. And the nice thing about, <laughs> Good. The nice thing about Good his game. videos is you don't, you don't need to watch them. They're right. almost like little podcasts. Because exactly. I think his, That's true. his videos are basically just either still images or just like some gameplay. So I would listen to him yep. in the car as I drove, and I listened to every single, I'm pretty sure every single Dark, Dark Souls lore video for the original Dark Souls that he released. And he must have had, damn, he must have had like 15 at least, something like that. So, yeah. and and this was a year after Dark Souls came out, and a year after I had been playing it, I was still obsessed with it. So mm-hmm. I really got immersed in the Dark Souls lore, and it was all it was all from him. Before that, you know, I I'd played Demon Souls, I played Dark Souls, and I didn't really know there was much of a story. I didn't know there was, I knew there was a story. I don't know what it was. I didn't know it was yeah. so. I didn't know it was I so still deep. I, I yeah right. I didn't know <laughs> there was lore. I didn't know that everything was so important. Like item descriptions and boss soul descriptions and where items are placed and um, mm-hmm. all these just things that you would never really figure out on your own. You could. I can't. Um, you know, it was really it was really eye-opening for me. So watching or yeah. listening to his videos was great because it was very, very informative. And, you know, a lot of it was 
probably speculation because a lot of it mm-hmm. for all these games is speculation and guessing, but he was probably pretty close on a bunch of stuff. And, um, and he's just like a, a, a personable guy. He's got a good voice. He's, you know, he's fun to listen to. He's swearing mm-hmm. and all this stuff, which is nice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I, you know, I, I really liked it a lot. I haven't really kept up with him since then. I'm not sure why. I know he's done a lot of Dark Souls 2 stuff and a lot of Bloodborne stuff, so I, yes. sw- I swear I'm going to start watching those videos. Um, I just, as it, something else I will probably at least briefly touch on, I don't have a lot of time to always like watch stuff and listen to stuff, so yeah, um, same here. I just, just haven't had a chance. Uh, yeah, it always depends, you know. Yeah, that's my, um, that, that's my background with Epic Name Bro, and... Uh, yeah, he's and, a cool guy. And so what's what's cool about him too is he's had uh, opportunities to interview Miyazaki, and he's been able to ask him questions and um, sometimes get like ideas. Like he he could get Miyazaki to tell him something in a certain way that will kind of almost answer, not yeah. answer, but give him a better answer for lore. So when he talks about it in these videos, he will actually bring up. You know why he thinks something is a certain way. Um, yeah, and right now he's doing a few. He's he, right now he's got something where he's playing through Dark Souls again and explaining and reading everything as he goes, yep. making every event happen. And he's also doing this breakfast thing where he's trying to play through Bloodborne, I think, without dying. Um, and, it, and it's fun to watch him do that because it's it's cool seeing him how he plays Bloodborne and just Bloodborne. And I still think. Uh, think about this when I played it this weekend I still think Bloodborne is the hardest game it was my first game sure but watching him play I'll see him die in areas that it's like why would you die there but it's because it's a hard <laughs> game you know I think anyone has trouble um <clears throat> so moving on here's another guy um Lobos Jr uh, or Lobos Jr I don't know what he's really going by here but uh uh this guy is nuts this is like yeah yeah this is like nuts so what he does is I'm guessing this is just for me. Like I, I haven't really come across like a personality of his online uh, on Twitter or anything. I really just watch all of his videos and watch him just dominate. He tries to come up with the craziest way to play through Dark Souls and beat it. And he's the most calm guy, just kind of sitting there, sitting <laughs> back. He's just like, well, I guess I'll play some Dark Souls where the weapon changes every five seconds, and it's like he'll have you know uh, a cleaver, then he'll have a sword, and then he'll have a shield in his hand, and he's in the middle of fighting a boss. Yeah, and it's like I have to like think really hard with the weapon I'm so used to of how to fight this <laughs> boss. And this guy's like, well, I've got a shield in my right hand. I guess I gotta kill these, you know, bell gargoyles. And it's like what? And then he had there's another one. So there's this game Limbo. I think it's pretty much on every console now, every system, every yeah, platform. So. But it's totally black and white uh, with gray in there it's it, it i don't want to say it's black and white it's hard to explain the world but uh basically he's playing dark souls where it's not black and white but black or white it's like it's only like five shades to go from so there's yeah. no detail in the textures right no menu no hud he's doing it almost blind and it's like why you know, but it's crazy. It's fun to watch. And then lastly, another one I thought was interesting where he's playing the game where the world was upside down um, yeah, as he yep. was playing it. And that's that's nuts. But he does it, you know. Uh, yeah. It, it shows how, you know, it's it's a series you can master. Um, yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and you've watched a few of his videos? Um, yeah, I've, I've watched some. Uh, again, I... I don't know how I found any of these guys on here. It was probably through maybe Twitter or most likely just searching random. It's it's uh, it's what like it is. YouTube is, videos. Yeah, when we're when we're wanting to look up this stuff, you know, I, I, these really popular guys are the ones that come up. You know, they've earned yeah. their place in this yeah. community, and and that's how it works. Like they're there for a reason. Um, yeah, they're but, like yeah. the more prominent members of the community. So when you search YouTube for any kind of Dark Souls videos, you know, you see the the Lobos guys, and you see um, Epic Name Bro come up, uh, you see Vaddy come up, uh, and, and there's more. Um, shit, there's another guy, Terra Mantis, I think, who is, I, I think was one of the ones that was at the, the Dark Souls 3 thing. Oh, um, okay. I, I'm not too familiar with him. I know we don't have him in our notes. I might have watched, like, one or two of his videos, so I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not 100% sure on him. Um, but, you know, they these guys come up because they have a lot of videos, and they have a lot of good content and all this stuff. So, mm-hmm. 
so that's that's how I found probably all of them at any rate. Lobos, Lobos Jr. I, I, I assume that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I have, I've watched some of his videos. I have watched the videos where his weapon changes every few seconds. Um, mm-hmm. I watched a tiny bit of the black and white limbo video, and that that just seemed like way too much. That's I know, ridiculous. So I, this guy's obviously incredibly skilled and incredibly good at the game, and um, I, I do like some of his videos. Like I said, those couple I just mentioned. Uh, he's the guy that tried to go through Bloodborne. And beat everything with just his fists. Oh and, wow! Um, I, I I mentioned that like weeks ago. Um, I don't know if he did it. I assume he probably did. I only watched like the first video, but uh, I assume he probably did. He he beat Gascoigne with just his his fists and I think oh visceral God. attacks. So, um, wow, that's incredible. No, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> in in general, I will say I'm not a huge fan of like the ridiculous, <laughs> the uh, like ridiculous challenge kind of videos. They don't really. They don't do too much for me personally because it's not something that I'm ever gonna really try. Cause uh, yeah, you know, I consider myself decent at the game. You know, yeah. I, I I got platinums in all of them, but that doesn't really mean much when there's you know guys that can go through and beat the game with their weapons changing every five seconds or you know beat the game upside down or any of that. Um, so I've watched some of them and I've enjoyed them, but I in general I just I'm that's just not the kind of videos that I typically like. And again, part of it is just my time commitment if I'm going to sit down and you know browse YouTube for a couple minutes I would rather oh, yeah. I don't even know if I have any specific thing I like to browse I usually will just check my the people I'm subscribed to well, watch their you videos know what? we're we're kind of like in the same I mean within our generation very close in like you know the games we like you know kids you yeah. know or family life like yeah. I think we're at this age or this group in this time where we we don't really spend time watching YouTube or Twitch videos, you know. Like I never did. It's, yeah. It's and and it's funny. It's so like the the Souls games I like so much. This is the first time I've ever sat myself or seen myself sit down and watch people play through a series of games. It's the first time. Um, Basically, yeah. It, but it's still hard. Like these videos I watch most of these guys. Normally, I don't watch like Lobos. I can't really watch it all. It's really cool, and I'll always recommend it and talk about it. But E&B will do his, you know, a little 20, 30 minute uh, where he's getting an in-depth discussion. And like he said, it's almost like a podcast. I yeah, I will sometimes be tabbed into another browser. I can actually work and listen, you know, yep. which is pretty cool. So, um, but yeah, let's let's move on to some stuff that's not necessarily. Well, actually, before we do that, yeah, so Vati, Vati Vidya or Vati Vida, I don't know how you say his name. So this is a guy that he... <clears throat> and you might want to speak on it more. He seems to make videos about lore, but he makes them like they're movies or stories. Yeah, kind of. He does. Um, he does some that are like very cinematic, and they're like narrated like it's a like a story. Mm-hmm. He does some where he just talks, you know, like more like a a person on person kind of thing. He does others that that um. Like he'll do in impressions, like from the Dark Souls three stuff that we've seen. He does he my favorite videos of his that I really love, and I'm a, a pretty big fan of his. I, I like him a lot. Um, he does these ones. Uh, I don't remember what the hell they're called. They're like like things you might have missed in the various games, like uh, things you might have missed in Dark Souls and Dark Souls two and Bloodborne, and they're like these really weird, obscure things that you'd never notice unless you you know were like really, really, really paying attention. I don't know how he collects all these. I assume it's part he finds them himself, part he gets them from the community or whatever. But they're really well done videos. He has a great voice. You can just listen yeah. to his voice all day. Mm-hmm. And um, so they're really, really interesting. There's things in, like in Dark Souls 2, I believe, in the gutter. Oh boy, I'm probably getting this right. There's like these big columns of like trash. And inside the trash columns, you can see like, like a Heineken beer bottle and like a steering wheel for a car or something like that. Like really? These really, ri- really ridiculous things that you would never expect in a a, a Dark Souls game. That is um, pretty cool. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to check that out. So if nothing else, if nothing else, out of any of these guys and videos we talk about, Vadi videos, um, like things you may have missed, I think are great and um, they're yeah, they're re- they're gonna... really fun. They're really informative. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely suggest it. Okay. Um, and, okay, and another, I think this would be the last of like the streamers I wanted to talk about is Jeff Green. Okay, and so as a, 
man, as a hardcore, like, video gamer, I mean, not just video game, gaming's my life, so I follow it, I followed it forever. He, uh, Jeff Green was an editor for Computer Gaming World back in the late 90s, became editor-in-chief of the magazine, you know, did the podcast, you know, he's he's a huge gamer himself. Uh, he had a podcast that was very popular uh, with some other popular industry guys, um, and then he's moved on since then, I think he's a consultant now, um, but... Okay. He, it's really cool. He, he's an older guy. I'm, I'm assuming he's in his, um, yeah, he's 53. Uh, you know, he's an older gentleman, a little older than my dad, but I guess I could still consider him my dad. Uh, he, <laughs> he was playing through all the games, uh, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2. I don't know if he did Demon Souls, but also, uh, Bloodborne. I think he's currently doing Bloodborne if he hasn't finished that yet, uh, where he streams it. And a lot of people join. Now, What's interesting about him is he's this different generation from the current streamers, the guys that kind of yell or are crazy or do crazy things. He's more of the laid-back, funny uncle where he's just (laughs) cracking jokes all the time. (laughs) And, like, he talks TV shows, like, too, where people ask questions or people will ask funny questions like, what's your favorite dad jokes? And it's funny because I I guess I'm a dad now and I make stupid dad jokes all the time because of my dad, but... um, I just remember one, I was having my wife watch it, so I was watching him play Bloodborne on Twitch, I did Chromecast to my TV so the whole family could watch, even though he cusses, oh well, it's funny, but someone asked in the chat, what's your favorite dad jokes, he's like, oh, what's my favorite dad jokes, and he goes, uh, and this is one that I do all the time, he says, whenever whenever my daughter says she's hungry, I say, hi, hungry, and that's like a stupid dad joke, and I do that all the time. My wife busts out laughing because that's exactly <laughs> what I say. But that's what's funny about this guy. He's not the typical, like, you know, 20-year-old gamer. He's a guy that's, you know, older, has got that yeah, that humor to him. But he's he's really he's good at these games, too, and he gets sometimes gets help from it. But, yeah, funny to listen to. It's like a breath of fresh air um, considering how, you know, the current streamers are, you know. And to be honest, I... I you know, when I'm his age, my kids are going to be out of the house. I'm going to want to use my time to stream games yeah, or, right? or right hollow That's... project, however we're going to do it in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, he's, no, he's, I recommend anyone to watch him because you know what? He doesn't do it often and he doesn't take all day. So it's kind of short, funny. It's like watching an episode of The Simpsons. That's how I'm going to relate this to you. It's, it's that type of humor. Um, okay, well, now guy. you're speaking my language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so, uh, did we want to say anything else about that before we move on? I want to move on. Um, to... Yeah, as far as Jeff Green goes, he's a guy that I never heard of until yesterday. I think yesterday or Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yesterday was Sunday. Shit. When you emailed me um, uh, a link to one of his, I, I think one of his YouTube videos, and I watched it for a couple yes. minutes, and I was surprised that he was kind of an older guy, which... Maybe it's unfair of me because I generally, I, I guess I generally think of at least Souls fans to be kind of probably more our age between 20, 30, you know, mid 30s yeah. maybe. Um, mm-hmm. And the fact that, you know, he was, you said 53, so he's in his like mid 50s, which is, yeah. I think, I think my dad is 53 or 54 or something, so. Oh, yeah. And my dad still likes video games, even though I don't know if he's played one in a long time. Yeah. Um, so it's you know it was it was cool because like you said a a, a breath a breath of fresh air and it's nice to see people that aren't you know our our age playing it and it it kind of makes sense because you know the game should appeal to the people that grew up playing the brutally difficult you know Nintendo yes. games because it's mm-hmm. it's a little bit of a throwback to that where you know there's yeah. no hand holding you know there's you learn from repetition and you know all, all you know all, all that kind of stuff so yeah. it kind of makes it it, it kind of makes sense. It does, um, and uh, I I really think it, it it also lends to this idea we're talking about with the Souls community. Like, this is you know a wide uh, range of people that are playing these games, you know, and talking about them online. I mean, that it's like that's what this guy's spending his time doing at fifty three. He's spending his time streaming Bloodborne. You know, that is awesome. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I hope you're doing that. Wh- there's one more person I actually just thought of. Oh, um, yeah. There's, uh, I just looked it up on my phone because I was trying to remember her name. Um, I don't know how many, I don't know if she has anything other than Dark Souls. Um, it's a, uh, an account called K Plays, K A Y Plays. Oh, yeah. 
I've heard of Have that. You? Yeah. She she played through the first Dark Souls, and this was uh, maybe like a couple of years ago. She mm-hmm. played through the whole thing totally blind. She recorded all of it, you know, her commentary and everything. And you know, at the very beginning of the game, she has no idea what she's doing. She's like really. You know, anyone that's never played a Souls game, because she never played Demon Souls, and this is before Dark Souls 2, I believe. You know, she's, like, really stumbling around, trying to figure things out, but she's super, super observant, and she, like, she meticulously checks everything. But, you know, you watch the first video, where she's, like, bumbling around the Undead Asylum, you know, and if you skip to, like, you know, where she's fighting Ornstein and Smo, or where she's even later, and she's, like, really good at the game, and she's really got it down, and it's, it's, it's great to see that she, you know, goes through the game and gets markedly better than when she started and it's just nice to see um just to see a girl do it because you un- unfortunately you probably think and i do it too which which sucks you probably think of them as more male oriented games than you know there's obviously a lot of girls that play it. my wife played through and loved the bloodborne mm-hmm. but there's probably more guys playing the souls games than girls and i know there's definitely a lot of girls that play it but yeah you know sh- she has these videos and they're very entertaining and very fun to watch and I just wanted to mention it because I hadn't even thought about him in like a couple years, and I don't know what made me think of him, but it just popped into my head, and I was like, "Shit, I want to mention but, that because they're pretty." No, fun. that's a good mention because it, it it is cool to then watch these games where it is these blind runs, you know, where people that are haven't played or know the series, and you're seeing them go through it instead of you know, which is nothing wrong with this, but the normal. You know, guys that we always watch where they know the game, so we're watching them just dominate. So it is, yeah, it is exactly. a cool balance. Um, and, and that's kind of how my Demon Souls is, is mostly blind. I have a few things I've heard here and there, but I'm not really looking anything up as I play, which is a first. If I was really stuck at a boss on Dark Souls or Bloodborne, I'd kind of read up what other people did. But when I'm now with Demon Souls, I'm not reading it up, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm having a good time with that. Although, yeah. again, I think because of my veteran status now, it is a bit easy. Every boss I've gone to, I've pretty much figured it out. And... You see, I, Demon Souls is probably the toughest to go through blind. And, you know, maybe not anymore because you are a, a seasoned yeah. veteran. Um, it was my first game, so it was definitely tough to go through blind. And I didn't go through blind. Um, I had some help. When Whenever we get to our Demon Souls episode, I have yes. a lot to say about it. I'll say that okay, much. Cool. But um, it's it's... A little weird, even for the Souls games, like the way the the um the like the light and dark system works, and like uh, that like I dying see, there's stuff I do not get, <laughs> and I probably won't. <laughs> that, yeah, that's one wor- of them. This world tendency. I yeah, yeah, yeah. World tendency. If you die a certain amount of times, it goes to the dark black, and if you uh, if you kill the bosses, it goes to like pure white, and then certain things happen if it's pure white or dark black or pure black, whatever the hell it's called, so you, yeah. if you want to, like, get all the trophies or get certain items, it's 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 very complicated compared to, I think, any of the other Souls games, at least in that aspect. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, once I've beaten it, what I feel, and then you to get back to it. I'd really like to see you I'm, get back. Um, I'm chomping at the bit. If my goddamn PlayStation 3 wasn't broken, I would yeah. sit down and play it as soon as we're done with this. But, yeah. oh well. No, it's cool. We'll get to that. Um, yeah, I will. But anyway, uh, so yeah, moving on. So for a non-streamer, there's uh, someone I found recently. It, when I'm going through Reddit, I'll always see these, or Twitter, I'll always see these awesome, this awesome art for the Soul series. And I finally linked, found the link to it. It's Sparkly Crow. You can go to sparklycrow.com. Uh, it sounds like it has to do with, in Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2, there's the uh, nest where they want something yeah. shiny. Uh, yep. the, the bird or whatever. Anyway, yeah, if you want to check out sparklycrow.com, there's really awesome posters. They're posters that I would buy, or these prints. Uh, uh, and I think they, you can even get these t-shirts. They are amazing. The art is amazing. Like, every single one looks awesome. I had um, never heard of it until you emailed me the yeah. the link. And I, I, I looked at it today for the first time on my lunch, and I was blown away. They're some of the most amazing prints posters i would absolutely buy any single one of those on, on a, especially on a shirt i've been dying to have a soul shirt for a long time now um but I know. they're amazing and and so like okay so my like current living situation i have a real nice game room right now it's really cool it could be a little bigger but me and my you know wife we're not in a permanent place right now we're going to be moving again but we plan to buy a house in a few years once i get yep. the ultimate game room i will cover it with these posters these that's how awesome yeah these posters i, I are. definitely i want to buy at least one i mean we don't have like a a huge amount of space to put posters, but I would definitely buy one and, and hang it somewhere. And I don't even yeah. think I have any posters hanging, but I would 
definitely have one of those. I, I especially like the two Demon Souls ones that they have on there. There's one for the, let me see, the, Str uh, the Shrine of Storms, which looks really cool. And they have a, a Maiden in Black one, which also looks awesome. Yeah, they all look great, like and it's a, this really specific art style that I don't know what it's called. It's right. almost cartoony a tiny bit, but not really that cartoony. Like it's like pulpy. Know, they, the, I think I think I think they call yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Pulp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like sometimes it's not. Like a, sometimes like a, it does seem to have its like own style to it, which is really cool. Um, well, they, they're absolutely awesome, and everyone should definitely check them out. Yes. Yeah. We'll we'll link to that. Um, okay. So you know there. So that's a lot of the people in the community, and there's so many others I wish I could talk about or find out about, and probably will eventually. But I, you know, something I, I like out of all about video games, like I, I, I've come to the realization where I think I like the Souls series more than anything. I yep. love Sonic. I'm obsessed with Sonic, but I realize I'm not as obsessed with Sonic as I am with the Souls series. Like I quickly, after beating Bloodborne, built a shrine for Dark Souls on top of my bookshelf. <laughs> okay, um, and so I kind of want, you know, I, you know, right now with BlueGamer.net, my BlueGamer YouTube, I want to, I want people to come to me and watch my videos to learn about the news, get my idea about the news and all of that and reviews. But I specifically too, I want people to want to watch or, and listen to us about, you know, Dark Souls. So we might here for a second kind of talk about what me and you, Shane, you know, we, we think about ourselves in the community. So like, I think I'm more of the type where I, <clears throat> I, it's something I don't ever see myself being a complete expert in. Like, I'd still look up to the guys like e &B and all them um, when it comes to being esper experts in the Soul Series. I like to see myself as someone that's like, I'm pretty good and I figure out some really cool tactics and strategies that I can tell newcomers, you know, to help them get into the series. I really think yeah. a lot of to get into the series, there's just that push in that certain specific area. Where does that player need that push so they can get into the series and enjoy what everyone else is in love with, you know? So, like with my yeah. brother, that's why I'm trying to push him to play. And I want to do that. My plan is once I beat Demon Souls, I'm going to go back through in each game and I'm going to kind of make a newbie series. I want to make a, like a series of videos where I'm kind of like, playing as someone that's like a non-expert but i figured out some pretty easy ways to get through things um yeah. where it's not necessarily cheesing but it's kind of helping you learn you know how to uh how to get through the games i want to i want that push for people i want to do that so then people can enjoy the series and not you know overlook it yeah um i'll say i my presence online is you know, I'm on Twitter. I've been on Twitter since 2009, but I didn't really start using it until like maybe two or three years ago. I'm on. I've been on Instagram for a while since it, since it's been available on Android phones. I've been on it. You know, almost shortly after that. Um, so you know, I'm I'm usually on those things. I'm posting whatever. I mostly video game related, but not always. For YouTube, you know, I never cared about YouTube at all. I didn't see the appeal of like. You know, I had friends at work that I would be like, oh, you know, what did you do on your hour-long lunch break? Oh, I spent my entire hour watching videos on YouTube. And I'd be like, what a gigantic waste of an hour lunch. <laughs> um, so I never really I never really understood YouTube. Yeah. Um, recently, really, I guess when I started playing Bloodborne and I got a PS4 and I realized how easy it is to take screenshots, which I use for my blog, but then um, record video, which is as easy as pressing a button, um, I was like, you know, I might as well upload these to YouTube. I like boss battles. I've talked about it before. That's what my YouTube channel is right. mainly. That's what, and that's how I of. found your blog was because y you had your uh, Nosferatu blog, and I yeah. was first into Bloodborne. And in the way you explained things, it was very engaging for me because it was. It was like really explaining it, like, man, this is what's going on. This is what I did, and and yeah, and that's how this this whole thing started. Yeah, you know, and that's writing is my favorite thing to do. Um, yeah. I like to write. I, I try to write. I try to write fiction, short fiction. I'm working on a novel right now. I liked writing about video games in my blog. So writing is really my my favorite thing to do. I've come that's to cool. really 
really, really enjoy making this podcast. It's one of the highlights of my week, and which I never thought would happen because I have anxiety. I hate hearing my voice. I hate seeing myself on camera and all that kind of stuff. Um, so th- this has kind of helped break through that a little bit. Uh, That's cool. So with with YouTube, I was like, okay, I'm gonna record my boss battles in Bloodborne, which I did, and I up- uploaded close to forty. Uh, cl- at least close to like 35 videos in Bloodborne. Not every single one with bosses. A couple were like silly little real short videos. But I, I like boss battles, so Bloodborne has some of the best boss battles around. Dark Souls mm-hmm. 2, I'm doing that as well. So, you know, uploading all those. I played through Guacamelee and that game had some decent boss battles. So a- anything on PS4 currently that I can upload boss battles, I'm going to. Because I've always been fascinated with them. They're basically my favorite part of video games. And, um, uh, I, you know, I, th- I thought it would be interesting for a YouTube channel. And um, I'll say th- the big thing with, like, a lot of gamers, it seems like almost everyone is doing it, is, you know, live streaming via Twitch right. mm-hmm. or whatever you care to use. And yeah. um, I recently decided to start doing that just to kind of check it out, see how it goes. Uh, mm-hmm. So I live, I've live streamed Dark Souls 2 uh, twice on, on Twitch. Again, because the PS4 makes it so easy. You basically yes. have to just press one button and then you're good to go. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll give this a shot. Expecting no one to really bother because, you know, why the hell would anyone watch anything I do? But my first one was like a half an hour and it was, it was awful. But I played a couple <laughs> nights ago. I played for a little over two hours, like two hours and six minutes, I think. Wow. You know, streamed the whole thing on Twitch. It was um, going through the Lost Bastille, going through some of No Man's War, fighting the Ruined Sentinels, um, fighting a couple random pursuers, and it was it was a lot of fun. I had seven watchers. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's seven more than I was expecting. Um, and there was, yeah. it was a, a a couple guys from Instagram that I've, I I I've I've been talking to for a little bit, I guess. I've you know here and there. Um, so they were like, you know, just filling up the chat log. I had almost like 200 comments by the end of it. So that was nice. That was really a lot of fun. So I, I plan on continuing that most times when I play Dark Souls. I'm probably going to stream tonight, which, if you're listening to this when it comes out, is not Tuesday night but Monday night. Um, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it Tuesday night as well. Um, so. Uh, I feel like I'm getting into rambling territory. Well, now. no. Let me ask you: do, when yeah, you sure. when, when you do the Twitch on PS4, are you doing it where the um the the ch- you can see the chat as you're playing? Mm-hmm. So yes, then you can um, answer questions as they come in. Yeah, I did. I do and I don't. Um, when I uh, when I streamed a couple nights ago, I didn't have like a microphone set up because my wife was sleeping and my daughter was sleeping in the next room, so oh. you know I had to be quiet. So. Yeah. It was just just me playing. I had the chat log up on the side for a little bit. Um, I had the Twitch app open on my phone, so I was like responding oh, to the people, you know, that's cool. through my phone. That's so that's that's kind of how I that's kind of how I did it. I know that's like compared to a lot of the other Twitch streams, that's kind of boring because you know there's no there's no it, it's me not talking and you know I would if I had the chance. Maybe one one of these days I'll do one where I can talk if my wife isn't asleep yet. Um, I'll do that, but. Yeah. That, that's that's how I did it, and um, again, it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was interesting. Um, I was not expecting seven people to jump on, so I'm uh, no, that's thanks, that's cool though. Thanks to you, seven people that you know jumped on. I, I I put it up on Instagram and I I put it up on Twitter and Facebook. So all those people, I saw it from there, I suppose. That, no, that's cool, and you know that's something I want to do more of. I, I I would love it to where, and it doesn't have to be the Soul Series any game where I'm just playing games online on Twitch where. People can chat as I'm playing. I mean, yeah. I like that. Although there are times where I'm trying to play through a single player game and I'm focusing and I just yep. want to get through it. And I, I, I'm just recently getting used to talking a lot as I play because I don't think if you don't talk too much, it kind of gets boring. I think it depends on the game. I don't think people have to talk all the time. Uh, but with Souls, um, you know, when. There's just so much you can talk about, you know. Um, yeah, yeah I'd like to. I'd like to get into that where, yeah, there's so many questions people can ask and you can answer, and that's what's interesting. Seeing about all these popular streamers with the Souls games is they have so much they can say, and then so many people ask questions, and they can 
talk to the community. I mean, yeah, I like that. I like because you're connecting. It's the Souls community. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. all comes back to what this episode's about. Um, and I think that's it, really. I think that's really it for the Souls community, unless you have anything else to add. Um, uh, I, shoot. I, I do. I, all right, in, in closing, I want to say mm-hmm. that um, anything I've ever done with either this podcast, my blog that I maintained for a little bit, um, any of my YouTube videos, you know, all this stuff, I've never done it for, like, notoriety or fame or money or, you know, a- any of that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think I'd ever want to be famous in that way. I just, I, mm-hmm. I, I try to avoid the spotlight like it's the plague. Um, <laughs> well, so, you know, but at the same time, I'd like to grow the fan base of the Souls cast because if there's one thing I love, obviously, is talking about the Souls games. Yeah. And that's what I really want to do. I want to talk about the Souls games with you. I want to talk about them with our fans Everybody, or, yeah. or, yeah, our general fans of the series. So... That's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it out of, you know, my love for the Souls games and anything else that comes up is a, you know, a nice little bonus. If I get, you know, if I, I'd like us to get more fans, if I get more like yeah. personal Twitter followers or something silly like that, that's fine. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, that's, that's something that I'm, you know, I, I want to get out there. And no, that, that, uh, it's, it's cool that you brought that up because you know, I I've always wished that I could turn this into a career where I'm talking about video games. I see I know, and that would be awesome. It. By the way, that yeah. would be awesome. And and I've always avoided doing things a certain way. And you know, it hasn't given me the money. Um, maybe I think it it's really the right place, the right time to get that exposure. I've actually been doing Blue Gamer since 2006. Um, I started the podcast, I think, in 2007, although that kind of would taper off after some time, but it would come back and go. And then I really started getting into YouTube a few years ago. And it's never really... The most I've made, maybe I think a couple months ago, I made uh, two bucks. Nice. I make two bucks (laughs) during a month time frame on YouTube. And it's like, I'm just going to keep doing it because I, I... This is how I do it. I... Do it to the extent that I'm willing to and still enjoy myself. I'm sure I don't want to get to this thing where I'm like, man, I keep doing this. I'm not making money. No, I, I want to do it to the point to where I'm having fun. Yeah, exactly. And, it's fun. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And that's what I, this I, is. Yep. I, I think it's a lot of fun. And even for myself, like my YouTube videos, especially, um, I upload them mostly for myself, for like for posterity's sake, because I like to I like to look back and just watch my my you know my random yeah. boss battles like i'll i'll you know on my lunch or at home or whatever i'll open up youtube and just watch like one of my like my martyr legarius battle from dark uh, from bloodborne or you know something yeah. like that and so i always like to have i guess records of the stuff i do in video games yep. so i do it for myself and it's fun and mm-hmm. I, some some people watch them and yeah you know that's good enough for me and if more people watch them that's great if more people start talking about us or you know any of that i think that's great too again i i I would like i would like um discussion in the for this podcast and you know i know the souls community is a very big one people are always people are talking there's there's so many people hopefully people will realize how unique we are and they will engage with us but we're um, the most amazing podcast that anyone's ever heard so just exactly just cut it out you clowns and start listening (laughs) come on all right, guys. Well, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys, for listening in. Um, if you want to comment, maybe talk about some of the, your favorite streamers or people in the Souls community, um, put that in the comments. Share for other people to find because it's, it's really cool stuff that's going on in the community. Um, also, next week's episode, uh, it may come a day early. Uh, yep. We're not too sure yet. It may, but it's going to be on most likely everything we know about dark souls 3 because there's a lot of new stuff coming out oh dark souls 3 i'm so. very very excited i can't yeah, wait to do that too. episode we might yeah. record on we might record on sunday night so it mm-hmm. could be out on monday next week so look out yep. for that uh i'm very excited i'm i'm ready to to carve out two hours to talk about dark souls 3 <laughs> oh, wow. maybe maybe that's a little much but, yeah i uh, need i need my time to actually play some souls <laughs> <laughs> so well all right guys uh thanks for listening and we'll talk to you guys next week bye-bye